Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hello there. Welcome back. This will be for the book of Habakkuk. We're going to start in chapter 1, but before I'll read a little introduction to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk most probably served his ministry after the appearance of the Chaldeans in world history. Many scholars believe that he wrote after the Battle of Carchemish in which Nebuchadnezzar defeated the Egyptians in 605 BC and before the first deportation of the Jews in 597 BC. From his writing, it is also believed he lived in Jerusalem. If this is the case, then he was a contemporary of Lehi and Jeremiah, prophesying to the same people. Nothing is known about the man himself other than what may be inferred from his writings. The traditional material that has filtered down concerning him is evidently legendary and cannot be comfortably relied upon. It is known that he was a great prophet who left one of the noblest and most penetrating words in the history of religion. That was by Drumolo. The, the heading reads, When Habakkuk learned that the Lord raised up the Chaldeans to overrun the land of Israel, he was troubled that the wicked could be thus employed. Verse 1, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Rasmussen described Habakkuk's dilemma in this way. <clears throat> Habakkuk's mi miseries likely arose in the days of Judah's degeneration, after the time of Assyria's conquest of northern Israel, and before the time when Babylonia came to carry the remaining tribe, Judah, away into captivity. The religious reforms of Hezekiah in his century and those of Josiah a hundred years later, about 620 B.C., had put the just and the right at the helm in Judah for a time, but as always, resurgent corruption in politics, in morals, and in religion swiftly reappeared when the champions of right were gone. Religious compromises in Induced by the desires of the liberal and the libertine, ever seeking to soften the restrictions and responsibilities of Israel's covenant faith, brought derision and persecution upon the pious and the faithful. Under these conditions, Jeremiah suffered, and it is likely that this was also the setting of Habakkuk's ministry. Thus it is that he cries out against the iniquity, grievance, spoiling, violence, strife, and contention on every side. For the processes of justice and execution of the law seem endlessly delayed when the righteous are encompassed about by the wicked. That seems to be our day, doesn't it? Verse 3, Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievances? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, or grows cold, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judges, judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. That sounds like a Latter-day prophecy. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves, or are of their own making. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards, and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far, and they shall fly as the eagle hath that, hath, that hasteth to eat." They shall come all, all for violence, their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity, or captives of the sand, as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them, they shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? We shall not die, O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and, and, and holdest thy tongue, when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? And makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them, they take up all of them with the angle or hook, they catch them in their net, and gather them in their drag, or net, therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net, and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat, and their meat pleasant, pl plenteous. 
Shall they, shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nations? Habakkuk's lament is one that has been raised by many. Why does the Lord allow wicked people and nations to operate, and why are they allowed in some cases to punish God's people? Habakkuk did not mention the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, in his question, but it is obvious from the Lord's answer that they were the ones of whom Habakkuk was thinking. The Lord replied that he intended to use the Chaldeans for his righteous purposes in such a way that it would be difficult for Habakkuk to believe it. The Lord's response merely increased Habakkuk's confusion. How could God condone the cruelties of a nation more wicked than Judah, were the Chaldeans never to get what was due them for their evil ways? Habakkuk's faith was being tested. That was out of the manual. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.